It's my pleasure to speak with Dr. Paige Pinnell from the Brigham and Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School. Uh, Dr. Pinnell, what are the biggest challenges facing women with epilepsy, in particular issues around pregnancy? And as you've studied this, how has this motivated your own research? Um, well, I think I first got involved or interested in it because after finishing fellowship, and becoming an attending in epilepsy, I would be in clinic and women would come in um, and they would say, well, my doctor told me I can never have a family. Or if I choose to have become pregnant, I need to stop all my medicines and if I seize, I seize and the ch child will have all kinds of birth defects. And it just, um, it broke my heart. I mean, I just don't think that's an appropriate way for our medical society to handle things. And to me, it's not really any different than a woman with another chronic disease that is planning pregnancy, such as diabetes or thyroid disorder. And I really thought there's, you know, we can do this better. Women are still gonna become pregnant, of course. And we need to um, provide the information to allow their doctors and them to know how to get through that pregnancy safely. And it really got, this was many years ago, but really motivated me. And we've been fortunate, a lot of researchers in the field have now figured out that some medications are really very, very safe during pregnancy, and some medications are not. And so we've made a lot of advances. And now our research has taken it another step where we're focusing on not only which medicine, but what dose of medication is effective to maintain maternal seizure control, but yet not harm the child as far as birth defects and looking at the effects on fetal brain development and how those children do later in life and in school. Um, and so I think we're at the next level and we're really making a lot of great progress. Mm -hmm. And can you describe your own uh, NIH-funded multi-center study looking at maternal and, uh, and outcomes in offspring? Yeah, so I think, I mean, I think the study itself is a testament to the fact that others have decided this is also an important area of research and that the our government, the NIH, has decided it is worth the funding um, and that the other investigators are involved in doing a phenomenal job. We have a great set of investigators at 20 sites across the country spread throughout mostly major cities and uh, we enroll women during pregnancy, Kim Metter and I are working together as the lead of the study, and then, as I said, many epileptologists throughout the country are very involved. We also have obstetricians involved, and we follow the women during pregnancy. We uh, record what happens to their seizures in relationship to medication level changes. We look at um, comorbidities such as maternal depression and anxiety disorders during pregnancy and postpartum. Mm -hmm. uh, because some earlier work we did suggested that women with epilepsy are at higher risk for postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And then we look at the birth outcomes. So what are the birth weights of the children at birth? Do they go to the neonatal intensive care unit or are they born healthy? And then we follow them until they're age six years old and look at how their brain has developed, if they have any learning disabilities, any signs of autism. Um, we also look at the effects of breastfeeding. And the other uh, fortunate thing about this study is we've been allowed to enroll healthy control pregnant women, mm -hmm. and we've been allowed to enroll uh, pregnant women, I'm sorry, women with epilepsy who are not pregnant, uh, to make the uh, co comparisons to be able uh -huh. to come up with more scientific conclusions.